Hey folks, welcome to Moonshift Audio. I'm a big fan of Christine and the Queens and their particular style of art pop, so I really enjoy digging into how to reproduce, to be honest, which is one of my favourites of theirs. For this video, I teamed up with vocalist Maxima Elliott, who came to my studio and did a seriously great job with the vocal for this surprisingly challenging track. I can highly recommend checking out some of Max's other music. I'll put a link to that down in the description. For now, here's a quick preview of the track we made. Sometimes it feels far It is like a movie Played by another star She's a stranger To be honest Now I'm sitting alone And I'm trying to listen To the stories that could Make mine a little softer and far To be honest Before we get stuck into this production tutorial, I just want to introduce myself quickly. My name's Jack. I'm a UK based producer and mix engineer. I put out a new video every week, so please do like and subscribe. If you're making retro or electronic pop music and you'd like to talk about working with me as a producer or mix engineer, then feel free to drop me a line via my website, moonshiftaudio.com. But for now, let's jump into Cubase and take a look at this production. Okay, so here we are in the production session and I'm going to jump straight in looking at the Reese. This track has got a nice, thick, quite basic sort of detuned super saw running all the way through and it sounds like this. I've literally just made this myself with two Juno 60 saws both with a unison of four, moderate detune, an octave apart. And that's just giving our root notes. And then I duplicated this another octave up, exactly the same part. So with that in place, you kind of got a little bit of a framework to build the track around both of these I've got a really simple EQ. I'm just rolling off the sub frequencies. Following on from that, the other sort of melodic element for the early verse, at least, is a choir. Now I made this up from two patches. One's from Hallion, which is the stock sampler within Cubase. And to start with, it's just a long held note. And as we move into the second half of the first verse we get this slightly more complex it's kind of like a a root note really just with some other notes with a sort of very simple melody moving along the top of it Now you can hear this one, I have put on a phaser just to give it that nice rhythmic wash and I've really stripped out most of the low end. This was just to add some sheen on top of the pigments patch, which is the more low end of the choir. This is another patch I made myself. I wanted this really airy, breathy tone, so I'm using the female breath sample engine laid over a choir oo engine so both of those together sound like this again with this one also just scooping out most of the lows and giving it a bit of an upper mid and air boost with a pro q We 
because this track is so vocal heavy it really is just a very very simple kind of washy backdrop to this fantastic enormous lead vocal that literally is the entire instrumentation for the first verse it's super simple getting a bit of low energy from the reese filling up the low mids and this nice washy slightly melodic choir for the high and mid when we get into the first chorus we bring in the bass now this is a patch that i made myself using the mini moog preset in diva it's really simple it's just two oscillators a saw and a triangle both driven quite hard into a filter with an envelope to give it a little bit of a rounded movement no inserts at all no processing on this whatsoever and it's just playing this root note rhythm and the only other element that comes in here are these sort of low mid stabs which are actually not wildly dissimilar to what we were doing there with the bass again two oscillators a saw and a triangle with quite a lot more resonance on the filter and again this descending envelope on the filter to give us this nice bow 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 and what i'm doing here is i've drawn a nice bit of modulation just to give some movement and that really is the main kind of moving interesting element in the backing track so we can hear all of that together now Moving into the second half of the chorus, we bring in a piano. Now, I've used the stock one from Hallion here. It's a Yamaha S90ES. And again, such a simple line, just these nice low root notes. Quite low in the mix. For an EQ, I'm literally just rolling off the subs. super super basic for the second verse we basically go back to the same repetition of the first verse the bass stays in and the low mid stabs come in and we bring in the drums now although they're super simple as well there were a couple of quite interesting things going on with this drum patch we've essentially just got hats in a snare so we'll take a look at the hats first I've just used these two samples that are from the battery default sound bank. Ever so slightly differently pitched. They're panned one right, one left, just to give us a little bit of interest in the stereo field up the top. And then processing wise, there's a fair bit going on here. I've rolled off the subs, as you might expect with a hi-hat, and I've put in a bit of a mid boost just to kind of get a tiny bit more low end or sort of upper mids really out of that sound next up i've absolutely smashed it with a decapitator i've cranked it up to 10 and i've put the punish on and that's what's giving it that kind of rough sort of feel and you'll hear that the most if i bypass this second eq you can hear just how much kind of mid and low end mush was getting generated by that decap but when we roll it off we just get this nice sort of crushed top end finally we've got a valhalla room just on its default setting i've lowered the mix to about 30 percent we can hear it dry just to give it that space so the only other element of the drums 
and certainly the more interesting element is the snare and it's quite an unusual sound that they've got on the original production here is my recreation of it it's got a kind of whistly resonant sweeping filtery kind of effect and it wasn't straightforward to get there so i'm going to take you through the process that i went through I've bypassed all the effects on this, so we'll just hear the snare sample as it comes from the battery sound bank. It's quite electronic, definitely a synthesized snare. There's a lot of white noise there. And some kind of fluttery, could be some resonant filter with a high rate LFO or something like that, just giving it a little bit of an interesting character in the top end. But the first thing I needed to do to get where I wanted with this was to absolutely flatten it. So I've got a decap here with the punish button on and the drive all the way up. Then I was just adding a little bit more presence and rolling off the subs with a Pro Q3. Next up, another decapitator. Again, turn all the way up, not punishing it this time. but you can hear it's just further compressing, really obliterating that. I just wanted to turn it into a kind of short, sharp wall of noise. Next up, I wanted to lower some of the really high end off it. So I used another Pro Q3. So now we're getting that sort of slightly muffled noise. It's not just the white noise though, like taking it from a snare sample does make a difference. Now, where we start to get really funky is the filtering. So I'm using this um, Moog Filter XL, which is from Universal Audio. It's a really lovely plug in this. It just sounds really real. It's very analog. I think it's an excellent recreation of the Moog filters. So I've set this to band pass and I've turned the resonance up a little bit. So you can hear there that bandpass effect. I haven't quite put the mix on full, but the magic of this filter plugin is that we can use an envelope. So this is detecting the incoming audio, and I can use that to trigger an envelope. So if I turn it up, you can hear that cutoff being modulated by this envelope. I gave it like a 250 millisecond release. We don't need loads. So we're getting that nice tonal shift on a downward slope every time the snare hits. And now I've just put a basic Valhalla room on. This wasn't sounding quite right to me still. So what I actually ended up doing was taking that, bouncing it out as audio here, and then pitching it down, reverb and all. I'll just turn off this EQ. And there's something quite nice about a pitch down reverb. Everything sounds a bit dirty. And then I've got quite an extreme EQ here because I really wanted this to be very MIDI, a bit less present. Okay, so we've got our drums now, and that takes us to the end of the second verse. Now, there's only a couple more elements left to add to this. And the first is when we get to this lovely breakdown with what is effectively the second chorus. We've got this huge church organ. I'm just using the church organ preset from Hallian. It sounds like this. There is some reverb available in the sampler there. And I've just rolled off the subs. Church organs can go very low. So we don't want any of this mud down here. So as this kind of middle section continues, we bring back in some of the other elements. The drums come back. Those low mid stabs come back playing a new line with some nice descending sequences. 
Then we really start to fill it up again so the bass comes back, as well as that Reese to fill up the low end. And the final part of this production is the outro where we get this enormous guitar coming in. So I've used the Native Instruments Electric Mint instrument for this. And this is quite a distorted patch. Got the supercharger gain module in. Some reverb, phasing. This lovely stereo delay. And this wasn't quite thick enough, so I literally copied the line an octave down and I panned the high one slightly right and the low one slightly left. And now we get this. So we can hear that with the rest of the elements. For a highly affected, very distorted, lots of modulation, lots of time-based effects kind of tone like that, I think actually a sampled guitar instrument is absolutely fine. So we should probably just take a quick look at the vocal. Now, I loaded this in just when I was refining the production. At this stage, I've done next to no processing on it. You can see I've got a Pro Q rolling off the subs, an Arvox, which is a nice way to just get a lot of volume and hold a vocal in place. I wouldn't want to go with this for the final mix because it's a bit heavy handed, but just to bring the volume of the vocal up loud enough to fit with the other elements in the mix in a kind of quick and dirty fashion, it works really well. So the way Arvox works is that you've got the auto gain. So when I pull this threshold down by 22 dBs, we're actually adding 22 dBs of gain into the vocal. To my thoughts and now this is the opposite of gain staging. I am deliberately trying to crank that vocal up. And at this point, I don't mind. I know that it's gonna get heavily compressed. It's literally just as a reference during this production phase. For hours of time. And I slapped a Valhalla me feel like vintage I verb on there. And that is literally out the box. That's how this comes. I've to changed honest, nothing apart from I pull the mix down. And on this, other channel i've copied the vocal channel and i've left the mix on full because there are some interesting production elements on this vocal especially later on where we hear a super super wet vocal which i've looked at in much more detail in the mix which will be the next week's video so just to give you another idea of how well that arvox works you can see here how max really opened up in the choruses you can just see by looking at the wave shapes how much louder his vocal delivery was there. So if we come out of the verse. I, to be honest with you, broken and you're tender. Oh, it's in and now it's Now, I mean, that is absolutely crushing it, that compressor, and it's too much, but just to work around at this stage, it's absolutely fine. And that's basically the production. Not too much going on here, but there are some really lovely mix elements, especially to do with some quite interesting reverb routing and production on the vocals. So I'll look forward to showing you that next week. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe for more tips, tricks, resources, and downloads from me at Moonshift Audio. Till next time.